All right, it's time for my book reviews. <laughs> So I just recorded the um, update video for the month of February. And so now I'm doing the reviews that go along with that. Um, that one's a shorter video, this one's a little bit longer. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to be starting with the Black Stars series of shorts. The first one is The Visit. And um, I gave it an overall Goodreads rating of five stars, but let's actually get into the review actual rating 4.75. This was an enjoyable <laughs> yet slightly disturbing read and a great introduction to this series of short stories by Black authors. The main reason I'm not giving it a full five-star rating is because I feel that the end was kind of a cliffhanger. Um, not a true cliffhanger, but <laughs> anyone who's read my other reviews know I have issues with cliffhangers. I don't think it's a negative reflection of the work overall or an issue with the author's talent. It's just a me thing. Um, I thought one more page could have told us what happened to the characters at the end, but I also recognize that this is the kind of story that's supposed to leave you thinking, wondering, and questioning. When I say the story is disturbing, it's not the premise that's startling. I've seen other depictions of matriarchal societies in satire of the current patriarchy. <laughs> current patriarchy. Um, the shock comes in the details. The way in which these reverse, in, the way in which this reverse oppression is laid out leaves nothing to the imagination, and I think that's a good thing. But it also caught me off guard. Once I accepted the brute tone of the story, it all came together. It all came together. This story is a mirror image of the world in which we live, but instead of men having the power women do. I can imagine the author may have considered painting a picture of a peaceful ma matriarchy, but instead decided to stick with reality. If only men as a whole could uh, actually empathize with the reality that women face daily. So I'm just speaking of like men as a whole, like in general terms, I'm not pointing out individual men. <laughs> um, so excellent, perfect for adult readers, but recommended to teens with parent approval. Um, this is an imp important story um, to discuss earlier in life, the, the earlier in life, the better. Highly recommend it to fans of empowerment, human rights, and those who appreciate Black voices. So that was my review for the first short story in the Black Stars series. Let's look at the next story. The next story is Black Pages. I gave it an overall good read rating of four stars. And so let's see what I have in the review. This was an unusual read for me. I truly enjoyed the experience of reading it. The author's talent for the craft shines. However, the story was weird. I like the com I like complex story, a bit of a genre mashing, but this was different. I'm not really sure the best way to describe what this story was. Perhaps an urban fantasy mystery thriller? In any case, the ending was the issue for me not because it was bad in any way, just because I don't know what happens. I mean, I think I might know, but it's not clear. Um, this is an issue I've always had, books or stories without clear endings or cliffhanger endings. Still, there is much to be admired about this story. The poetic tendencies, the clash of the gin and the tech, the violence, the, sort, the secrecy. I could totally see this develop into something greater. Of course, I love the theme of book preservation, and I was impressed by the skills of Pharaoh's mother. That's one of the, that's the main character. Um, I just wanted more of this, but it ended up leaving me a bit confused. Still, a great adult read suitable for teens, but there are some depictions of violence. Recommend it to fans of diverse cultural experiences, fantasy and science fiction blends, and anyone who enjoys a good book preservation story. All right. Let's see what's next. Number three in the series, 
I will read this title better in this video than I did in my update video. So the title is 2043, a merman I should turn to be. There we go. I did not do so well in that other video. <laughs> I gave this one an overall star rating of three. And so let's get into my review. I really don't think this story should have been a short story. The premise is very interesting and worth more development than we get in this form. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it, whether intrigued because I like the idea or intrigued because I'm appalled by it. That may be a bit harsh. I don't really understand all that's happening in the story or how it really is. I know Black people are modified to become mer people so they can finally gain their 40 acres of reparations, and they're still dealing with white supremacists in the process. Also, this is apparently based on a song by Jimi Hendrix, which makes sense after the fact, but while reading it, Hendrix was nowhere on my mind. Still, the author shows talent in word choices and scene setting, but there was just too much going on in such a small platform. If someone is reading the whole Black Stars collection, this one is not to be skipped. It's worth reading, but as a standalone, I'm just not sure. I would recommend it by itself, um, but not sure. Hold on. <laughs> I would read it by itself, but not sure others would. These are my words. I'm reading my own words here, people. So this is good for those seeking stories by Black authors. So again, the way that it's written, it's, it's beautifully written, but the story is a bit confusing. Um, I, I don't think I quite got it all. I probably will reread re this one again just for clarity, but um, I don't think it's something that should be skipped from the series. Like it's definitely worth reading. And who knows, you may not have the challenges I have. You might understand it perfectly. All right, number four in the series, These Alien Skies. I gave this one an overall star rating of five. This one was my favorite in the series. So let's just get into my review. This is my favorite of the Black Stars collection. This is typical science fiction space opera with some fantasy elements set within the African diaspora. It actually speculates on the future of expanding the diaspora beyond Earth. I don't have a lot of words to say about this short story without repeating the blurb or giving spoilers. This is just what I was looking for in a Black sci-fi experience. It's good science fiction that just happens to be from a Black perspective. Love it. Highly recommend it to fans of science fiction, space opera, Afrofuturism, and stories by Black authors. So yeah, this one is just a really great story, period. Um, but the fact that it um, is from a Black perspective just kind of elevates it even more. And it was just my favorite out of the series. This one, i totally going to reread it again. I could have this standalone by itself without the whole collection. I just really liked the story. All right, the next one, number five in the series, Clap Back. I gave this one overall star rating of four. Um, this one is a little... Interesting. So let's go ahead and look at the review. This story was disturbing in a good way. It had to be to get the point across. There is a lot of shock value here for anyone not currently aware of the Black or PLC struggle. Not the best first time diversity read for a non-POC. Um, other than that, um, it's right on point. Um, I don't agree with everything that happens in this story and doubt the author does, but I don't know this person, so that's just speculation. Um, I admire the fact that this author dared to write this. While I hope other non-Black, especially non-Pocs, will read this and appreciate it, I totally recognize that this is not written for them. This is a story about a Black person written by a Black person for Black people. Um, this is going to make anyone who reads it, especially a non-Black person, feel uncomfortable. And that's okay. It's okay to feel uncomfortable sometimes. Discomfort can start great conversations. I think this is a great adult read, but could be suitable for teens with parent approval. It has some really dark themes and violent imagery. One issue with a cat rubbed me a bit wrong, but when I think about depictions of things done to slaves in books, TV, and movies, I got over the cat fairly quickly. It's hard to read, but purposeful, not exploitive. 
with some caution, highly recommended this to fans of dark speculative fiction, Afrofuturism, and fiction by Black authors. So this is one of those stories that's really powerful. It really sticks with you. It's uncomfortable to read, but if you read it, it sticks with you. Like it's worth having that uncomfortable experience to read a story like this. And if you're just not up for something uncomfortable, please don't read this and then complain about how uncomfortable it was. If you're open to the challenge, read it. It's, it, it's yeah, okay, let me just move on. <laughs> All right, number six in the series is We Travel the Space Ways. I ended up giving this one a two. Um, this one was a short story. So typically I give two star ratings to books that I don't finish, have no intentions of finishing, but that's not the case with this one. I'm giving it a two and it'll explain it in the review because I didn't hate it, but it was very troublesome for me. So I didn't want to give it a one star. I don't feel like that was, that would have been justified, but I, I'm going to explain in the review why I couldn't give it a higher rating, but just know that I can totally see other people giving this a higher rating. Um, for me, reading is very personal. So um, sometimes as critical and objective as I try to be, sometimes my personal feelings get affected. So let me read my review and you'll understand my rating. This is a hard review to write. I really wanted to like this story, but simply couldn't get past a few things that killed all the good qualities of the story. In a nutshell, the idea of attacking religious establishments based on the demands of another deity screamed hatred. I get what this author is trying to accomplish, and as much as I want Black people to be free from oppression all over the world, I can't see tearing down others to do it. What's the point in freeing one people if it condemns another? I want to be clear that specific, that specific ideas and or words are not stated in this story, but this is what I felt after reading it. If I ever muster the energy to reread it, maybe my opinion will change. This story made me sad. That's all I have to say. So again, I want to be clear what I experienced is not what was actually in the story. I'm not saying that the story was saying that, I mean, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm just going to stop right there. That's all I have to say. Okay. So the next thing I read was one of my IWSG book club reads for the month of February. This is Champion in the Darkness. This is the first of a trilo trilogy. I gave it an overall Goodreads rating of four stars. Um, and this, um, let's just get into the review. <clears throat> the actual rating, 4.25. I finished this story early in the month and enjoyed it. It's a great example of classic sword and sorcery. The Christian themes work well with the plot and come off as cultural rather than persuasive or political. This is simply the world in which the story takes place. This world and the faith-based magic system was intriguing to me, especially because it showed good and bad magic in a traditional sense that you don't see a lot anymore. Many modern stories blur the lines between good and bad, which often makes for a more interesting story and offers a wider appeal. But I think this story pulls off the classic notions of good versus evil quite well. The characters <clears throat> on the side of good are blessed with gifts to match their callings. These gifts range from scrolls, crystals, swords, etc. Some characters are able to balance multiple callings. I like the crystal sword concept along with the different colors and their meanings. I also like that when a warrior loses their faith, their sword dulls. I like a good checks and balance system on access to power. This was an IWSG book club read for the month of February, 2022. And in the discussion, I learned that men in the Dark Sisterhood couldn't be sorcerers. When reading the book, I didn't pick up on that. I just assumed that all the women were more powerful than the men. Women definitely play a large role in both the good and evil societies, which I thought was a refreshing contrast to some more traditional Christian views. This book also features some interesting takes on classic fantasy characters. Overall, <laughs> overall, um, I wish I had seen more of the creatures in the story, but that's just because I really love creatures. Um, the griffins were by far my favorite of the featured creatures. 
Um, if you aren't deeply opposed to some Christian views or religion of any kind portrayed in a cultural way, um, I think this could be a fun sword and sorcery read. Ideal for teen readers, but adults should also be able to appreciate it. Highly recommended to fans of sword and sorcery fantasy and those interested in religion-based magical systems. So there you have it. All right. My next review is going to be very short. This was for the other IWSG book, book club book for the month of February. Um, this was Lori Circle of Friends number one. Um, and I simply wrote that I did not finish this book, but read a lot of it and wanted it to count towards my Goodreads challenge. Maybe I'll finish it down the road. No rating until then. So typically when I don't finish a book, I give it a two-star rating. But that's because I'm usually not enjoying the book and I don't have any you know, intention of finishing the book. And I'm giving it the two-star rating kind of as a benefit of doubt. I feel like if I don't finish a book, I don't know if maybe the endings have turned things around. And so that's typically why I give a two-star rating. For this particular book, I didn't finish it. It is a challenging read. I may or may, like, I don't know. I might go back and finish it and maybe the end will make a difference. I don't know. So until that happens, I'm not going to rate it because I don't, I know I might, you know, there's it's possibilities, you know? So, um, and plus I, there was another book that I was just, I couldn't wait to start reading. And so, you know, got the better of me. All right. And so last thing that I read was the book selection that I chose for the Read with Faye challenge. Um, this is where you read something to help you hone your craft. So this is the business of short stories, writing, submitting, publishing, and marketing. I gave it an overall good read ratings of five stars. This is a must have, if for no other reason than it's a great reference for writers, aspiring or veteran. I read this book as part of the hashtag read with pay challenge. Um, as a writer who is also an avid reader of fiction, a challenge to read something to help hone my skills was just what I needed. I discovered this book by signing up to be part of a blog tour and then purchased my own copy. I devoured it. Um, it focuses on the business of short stories, but so much is applicable to, so much is applicable to poets, novelists, and writers of other genres. Um, she takes the reader step-by-step step through the process of conceiving a story, crafting it, querying it, marketing it, and so much more. I'm glad I read this book. Um, highly recommend it to writers who want to take their work seriously. So yeah, um, that I that was, I'm so glad I picked up that book. I'm so glad I signed up for that book tour. It was such a great read. It's something that I wish I had read earlier on in my career. A lot of it was repetitive because I've been in this field for so long that I, I've learned a lot of things, but it was just the way this was set up. Like this was a really good book and it did give me a different perspective on, um, short story writing that um, people do make careers out of writing short stories. I mean, I knew that, but I thought you had to be like a big time person to do that. So anyway, those are my reviews for the month of February. Let's see how March goes. Um, guys, please stay safe out there. I hope you are having fun in reading. And until next time, I'll see you guys.